be great to start early. I've got quite an agenda, so it would be great to start early. I noticed that Jordan didn't play in the exhibition and she was kind of limited in the open practice. Is she going to be good to go for the opener? Yes, I certainly hope so. Yes, we should have everybody that's um, available, um, everybody that is on our roster that's active, we should um, be able to have a full force on, on Tuesday. And just what was your overall uh, evaluation of the exhibition? Yeah, so... <clears throat> That exhibition was originally, obviously, a closed scrimmage. Um, and then as we, um, actually back in August, I actually wanted to, to turn it into an exhibition game um, because we were going to Maui. Whenever the wildfires um, happened, we wanted to be able to turn that into an exhibition to raise money for them because we were actually going to go play there. Um, I knew going into it that it was a tough scrimmage. We purposely scrimmaged SMU and NAU. Um, to see where we were going to be. Um, and so when we turned it into an exhibition, I knew we were going to be, it was going to be tough, right? It was going to be tough for us. Um, certainly didn't expect to go into this season even without um, Jazion or JoJo. And so that's been two huge losses for us early. Um, but we've been having some really good practices. We've been having um, an opportunity to build and, and get some players in some different situations that we weren't anticipating when we first put this roster together. Um, and then obviously to, to lose Jordan the day before the scrimmage kind of threw a, a wrench in things as well. However, I thought that it was really, really good for us to have that scrimmage in front of our fans in, with the bright lights on because we have so many new kids. And I thought it was really important that they play in front of our um, – just, just on our home court, um, you know, to try to get the bright – eyes, you know, out of the way. Um, I was not pleased with our scrimmage. I did not think we played well. I didn't think that we played um, together. I didn't think that we looked like we had practiced much, to be quite honest, and that's, that's disheartening. But I also thought our kids fought through some things, too, because they're not ever going to lay down, and I certainly thought that in the second half we competed and, and did a little bit better um, with our defensive intensity and and obviously we scored the ball a little bit better but um but it was just kind of a perfect storm for us on that game and i hated that that we didn't have a better um start but i'm so glad that that's how it happened and when it happened because um you know that's why you play exhibition games is try to try to get some of that out of you and to really see where you're at um you know nau is going to win their conference and uh, they had a great season last year I have a lot of respect for them so um, we really did get a lot out of it, and we've had a great week of practices because of it. Coach, even though you didn't love that game, like you said, moving forward, what are some goals you have, you know, starting clean slate? I mean, your record's still 0-0 zero, zero yeah. right now. So what are, what are the goals now? Yeah, so we have really challenged this team with um, just one game at a time, you know, and even one possession at a time. I don't know how many times uh, – this year already in our practices that we've played one possession games or trying to get three positive possessions together. Um, just really talking about playing little games within the game. Um, and I think that's really important for this group because they're because they are young, because we do have a lot of new players um, that, that we really are focused on um, just the task at hand. And so I'm excited for them to, to be able to open at home, to be able to play in front of their fans, to be able to play in front of their family, friends, things like that. Um, and to just kind of set the tone a little bit. You know, I don't, they weren't pleased with how that exhibition looked. Um, and so I, I really am excited for them to get, to get out and just show how much better we are than what we already showed. Um, this team has a chance to be special. Even with the injuries that we've already uh, um, encountered, they still, we, we are more athletic, we're longer, we're faster, we're deeper. Um, even with those two injuries, we're, we're still deeper than we have been in the past. And um, we are young, and, and that's going to be a challenge in itself. And that's, I, that's actually part of it, you know, as, as I even thought um, – in our first scrimmage, uh, when we scrimmaged SMU, I really felt like we grew up throughout the game. And I think that you're going to see that um, with our season. So every game that we play um, is just going to have to be, you know, that's what our focus needs to be on and, and that we just get better every single possession even. Yeah, 
and can you talk about you you mentioned the young players but girls like Bailey Maupin I mean she had minutes last year how sure. important is that now and then for years to come I mean by the time she's yeah. a senior she's gonna have a lot of experience here well I think that's what's exciting about this team is that even in that exhibition game we started three sophomores and all three of those sophomores got a lot of playing time as freshmen um, but the difference is is that they had five seniors around them last year who could really cover for them um, could carry them, uh, could kind of corral them, and can keep them calm. Um, and, you know, and, and, and understanding how tough they had to play. Now those sophomores are having to do it, right? And, and I love watching them grow into great leaders because uh, they're saying the right things, they're trying to do the right things, and, uh, and, and it's going to pay dividends up on dividends um, by their junior and senior year for sure. But um, I was really pleased with Kyla Freelon's effort in that exhibition game. Uh, I think she came out and really just rose up to the challenge. Um, she knew that Jordan Merritt wasn't playing, and and they've been kind of playing together and, and supporting one another and backing each other up even. Um, and so for her to come out and play the way she did, I think we already saw some maturity in her that she's got to step up and rise to the to the challenge and she's just such a gifted athlete that um, I thought she really showed that in that exhibition game. Um, same thing with Jasmine Shavers. Uh, Jasmine's getting so much better about her efficiency and that's what we really challenged her with. I think as a freshman um, she was so excited to be out there and she's so talented on the offensive end especially that um, she didn't take great shots all the time and so her percentages um, weren't great and, and her consistency wasn't great. So we're really challenging her on being more efficient and being taking better shots and maybe even creating for other teammates. And for her to come out and be one rebound away from a double-double, I think just speaks volumes to what we're trying to do and, and how much those three sophomores are going to um, – how important they are to, to, to our success this year. And, you know, for Bailey, um, she had such a great year as a freshman, um, has a lot of respect from, from the coaches in the, in the conference by being chosen as a preseason honorable mention selection. Um, but where Bailey's role is going to change is that now she's not – she's going to have the best defender on her from the, from our team and, or, I mean, from our, from our opponent. And, um, that's different, right? And as a sophomore, sophomore year is hard because now you know, <laughs> and now people know you. And so they can plan and they can scout and they can defend her differently. They can send two at her. Um, and I thought that she really struggled in that exhibition game, but I also thought that, you know, she was trying to carry us and probably trying a little too hard. And so, um, I think she's had a great week of practices. I think we're going to see definitely a different Bailey on Tuesday. Uh, she's going to really be able to help her teammates score um, when she does draw two defenders or she is getting, um, you know, fouled. At, uh, you know, she's going to get fouled every possession. She's going to make, it's going to be really difficult um, for her to get open looks. And so I think she really learned a valuable lesson on um, at a, in that exhibition game that, you know, she, she can't, um, it, it, she can't necessarily score every time the ball touches her hands. She's going to have to help others score and and be a little bit more patient with her game. And um, I just love her mentality and I love her determination. And, and we're going to see some really great things out of her. Um, but I think those three have a chance to be really special and do some special things this season. Coach, it looked like uh, on that on that exhibition, NAU was looking to really push the pace. Yeah. Um, it looked like you guys um, coming out of the half. Um, it looked like you switched to, at least from what I saw, a little bit of a smaller, more athletic lineup, mm -hmm. um, pressing up um, higher up the court. Um, obviously, you can't do that the whole game just because right. of the fatigue part of it, but is that something you're looking to, to do more? Yeah, so originally with, with JoJo and Jazzy on um, available, that's, that was our vision, right, was to be able to extend our defense in the full court and be able to press and, um, and play at a faster pace um, and put some other people on their heels instead of them putting us on our heels. Um, I, I, we still want to do that. I still think we can do that. Um, I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised, with our conditioning in that exhibition game because to be able to come out in the second half and 
extend our defense in the full court and we created some turnovers and we played a little faster. It, it helped me realize that we were in a little bit better shape than I thought and that we can do that. So all this week, we've been playing faster. We've been playing, um, our defense has been extended. And I think that's really gonna help us um, be able to match the athleticism in our conference, um, even in our first matchup. I mean, Rio Grande Valley is athletic. They like to spread the floor. They like to get downhill. They like to shoot the three, very much like NAU. So um, I think that it helped me as their coach to know that like, okay, they're, they're capable of playing that way, um, even without those other two kids on the floor. Hey coach, uh, I mean, we, we've been kind of mentioning the how young this team is, yeah. the injuries, all this culmination yeah, of, of, of negatives to even start the year. But is there something that you've seen? I mean, surely you saw them throughout the game when you have to deal with injuries stuff like that. You've got to bring in new players and have more minutes on the court yeah. and you maybe see the growth over time. I guess after seeing that and you hear the negativity in the, the locker room, they know that they want a better game out of that. What's one of the main things that you're looking at to really improve on? Yeah, um, so I think this team's going to be a really good defensive team. And so that's got to become a, a possession by possession um, mentality for us. And it, we can't let teams go on runs. You know, we can't get tired and not defend. So I think we really talked about that and about buying into um, the defensive piece of it. Um, also, I, I was really pleased with our rebounding. Um, I thought that we crashed the offensive boards better than any team I've had since I've been here, and that's been an emphasis for us. And even without um, you know, Jordan Merritt on the floor or JoJo, or JoJo was going to be a kid that could really rebound the ball for us, I thought Kyla showed us that she could do it. I thought Jasmine showed us that she could do it. We changed the way that we were attacking the glass um, about a week ago. And so that playing that exhibition game that way, um, we saw some – it, it, it wasn't really fair to our kids, if you if you want to be honest, to be able to throw them into that and say, like, Look, this is what we want to do. But I think it showed them some confidence in like, hey, it's going to work. We just got to make it work more often and we can't have as many slip ups. So there's a lot of positives out of it. And this is the thing that I love about this team and about what's already happened to us is that we've already experienced adversity. Like in the first month and a half of us practicing, we've had some blows. And this team is not going to use that as excuses. Um, we've just had to pivot. And um, I've, I've, been, I've been thankful that we've been able to pivot um, with notice, right, before we actually start playing games that count. And so we've had some time, whereas – some of these injuries, if you're really building and building and building and you're in the middle of your season and right before you start conference, you lose them, that's when it's hard to pivot. So I'm really thankful that we're already going through this adversity and that our kids are already learning how to fight through it. Um, so they've learned a lot about themselves already. Um, but I would say the defensive piece and the, and the rebounding piece I'm real excited about. And the offense is going to just keep coming because they just have to get used to playing with one another in different lineups that we put on the floor because maybe we weren't anticipating certain kids getting as many minutes as they are going to get now. But I have always told – Anytime we lose a player to an injury, I've always told our team, you know, that that creates an opportunity for someone else to step up. So it's a great opportunity for the others. Uh, obviously, the season opener coming up, uh, Rio Grande Valley, I guess. Uh, how much can you take away from last year's film? Obviously, yeah. you don't know exactly what they look like this year. Yeah, it's hard. The first games are hard. I, um, you know, uh, I think I know Coach Lord. I've known him for a long time, and we've played them before, and we do know his system and like what he likes to run and how his teams play. His teams play extremely hard. They shoot the three ball a lot. They run the dribble drive offense. Um, you know, I actually just got off the phone with him and they're experiencing some injuries as well. Um, so we don't even, you know, you don't even know who's really going to be on the court with them. So the first few scouts are really hard because you want to prepare you to your team, but you don't want to overwhelm them. So when you talk about personnel, like you don't know, like they might have, I, I, and I, I don't even know, like they might have so many, like five new players and five returners and, and then, you know, two or three transfers or something like that. And you're like, well, we can't prepare our team for 15 kids, 13 kids, whatever. Um, you know, you don't want to overwhelm them. So it really is these early games are about us and about um, how we want to play. And yes, we want to prepare our kids as much as we can with the scout. But um, at the end of the day, it really has to be like, we can't change everything we do every time we play a new opponent. It's got to be what we do. 
And finally, it's uh, Texas High School Coaches Day, uh, so a lot of celebration going around right now. Uh, one player of emphasis within the last year, Katie Farrell, uh, obviously <laughs> donates a lot of her love to, to, to you and yeah. her passion for coaching as well. She's going to be entering her first season. Uh, coach there with Lubbock High, I guess. Uh, any any special words for that for, uh, for Coaches Day? Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm so excited for her, and I'm really excited for her players um, because they have no idea. They might now, but they I don't think they have any idea how blessed they're going to be to be coached by her. She has a beautiful basketball mind, number one. Um, but the intangibles that she's going to teach them, the loyalty, the dedication, the competitiveness, um, she's a special player and, and she's a special person and she's going to be a really special coach. And, um, you know, what, 12 months ago when we brought her here, however long it was, um, Never in my wildest dreams did I think that she would stay in Lubbock, Texas and coach. And that is a huge blessing. And we are recruiting the heck, right, out of these kids and making them be Lubbockites for, for life. I love it. Just, just kind of even going back to players having to step up and things like that, having to step up and even, I guess, smaller lineups, having to play the four, like other – maybe guards are – they weren't, I guess, expecting to maybe early on. Just kind of – how do you think they've been able to do that? So I, the best thing about some of our returners, especially our guards, um, is that they watched us do that last year. Um, you know, we started Bryn at the four. We started Bree at the four. Um, we went small last year, and, and they recognize that the more positions they can play, the more time they're going to get. And so Jasmine Shavers has really stepped up and has been like, I'll play whatever position you want. So she'll bring the ball down the floor once as the one. And then she, you know, obviously she's a great two and three. And then all of a sudden she's the four. And really she probably got those nine rebounds because she was playing more of a four position for us at times. So I, I think our returners really get it. I think our newcomers are having to buy into it, um, but they're figuring it out that the more they can play, the better. Um, Jordan Merritt is one of those kids that can play multiple positions. Positions. Um, she's definitely a great four player for us, a stretch forward, but she can play on the perimeter. And when she plays on the perimeter for us, that allows us to play Kyla at the four and, and then like a big jazz or an Alina um, at, at the five. And so we get bigger. Um, and, and that was my you know, vision for this roster in the first place is we were going to be a lot bigger and we still have that capability. Um, I think Alina Enrique is really going to surprise a, a lot of people. She's a quiet player that um, is super solid, fundamental, really high IQ and hard, hard worker. Um, and just the fact that she's such a great passer um, is going to allow our team to be better. Um, you know, we were better last year because Big Cat was such a great passer from that four and five spot. So, um, Alina's going to do some great things for us. Jada Wynn also, and both of those kids are coming off injuries. And the exhibition game was really like the first time they've gotten to really even play significant minutes. We haven't even been practicing them very many minutes. So we've got to get them in a little bit better shape um, and just more confident in what we're doing. But we had a really good week of practices with them. And both of those kids are going to, they bring us experience. They bring us more size. And they're both very versatile because we can post Jada. Um, but she's also a prolific three-point shooter. Um, Alina can shoot the three ball. So I'm excited about the the um, the versatility that both ki that those kids bring us um, that, that are able to play in different spots. And I guess to start the season, a lot of home games to start. You already had one exhibition here, so how does it feel, I guess, to actually play not just your first actual game, but a lot of them to start yeah, the season? Yeah, you, you know, we obviously strategically do that um, because we're still building a program. We're still trying to you know, teach our team how to win. Um, I thought last year's team, um, you know, we stepped out and, and got beat in our very first official game last year, and then we were undefeated at home the rest of that way until we started conference. And I thought that was really good to help build their confidence. And same thing with this team, you know, that's why I'm so glad that we did play that exhibition game because I want these kids to learn how to win. I want them to learn how to protect their home court. I've been on a speaking tour like crazy and um, trying to sell tickets and just convincing Lady Raider Nation that we need the same support that the men get and that the football team gets and that the baseball team gets um, because we need the USA to be a really, di di really difficult place to play. And that's how it was when I played. I didn't get to play in the USA, but it was still the Coliseum was a really difficult place to play. For Lady Raider basketball, when Planet Pearson played, the USA was a really difficult place to play. They played in front of 10,000 people. And that's an edge. And that's an edge that, that we need. Um, even in the recruiting battle, you know, we, we are recruiting against 
teams that play in front of 10,000. And we've seen that it can happen here um, previously, obviously, for Lady Raider basketball, but we see it happen every night for the men. So I've just been on this kind of this rant and this rampage about trying to, to get the same support for our girls because uh, we want to win at U in the USA. And, and, and when we get to conference play, we want people saying at, 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 on their media and their, their press conferences that, I mean, we hate playing in Lubbock because that's the way it used to be and, and for the women's games. And that's the way we want it to be now. We were asked that question at Big 12 Media Days, the toughest place to play um, in the Big 12. And every one of our kids and I said the same thing. We said Iowa State because they play in front of eight to 10,000 every night. And it's, it's a, it, it gives them an edge. And we've played them close for a half or two at times there. And when we do that, um, their crowd gets involved and they give them an edge. And uh, so we're really, I just want to continue to, to tell, you know, Red Raider Nation, Lady Raider Nation, like we're all the same, right? We're all the same people that, um, that this team is going to be special. They're going to play really hard for, for um, the name on the front of their jersey. And we need their help. We need their help to create a, a really hostile environment for our opponents. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all.